Windows Server 2022. Welcome back everybody. I'm Prakash Vudan, your trainer for this entire series. First of all, I'd like to thank all of my viewers whoever are going through my videos because I got many, many, many mails asking for updating or uploading some of the new videos. Uh, but first of all, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude for your support. And the second one is that, of course, the whole world is passing through this COVID or this pandemic situation. I do believe that all of you are safe. Stay safe. Stay at home. Think of your family. Do not move outside. Do not go outside. So just because I have gone through, you know, so many YouTube videos, so many uh, news, I have seen not only me, we all have seen that every country is facing this situation. Every country is under this, you know, massive death. So many people are dying every day, every day. So many families are dying. So just because of that, you know, mentally, physically, we were not able to work. We all are working from home. Even I'm working from home. So I was also not able to make, you know, or update any of the video. That's because you see everywhere the people are dying. Okay. They all are suffering. There, there, there is no food. There is no oxygen. So many, many Many people are dying so many are suffering okay of course in between that those who are staying at home of course we all are there not only about those so we all are at home so that's why many of students or those who are working as IT system engineer system administrator or some of the students who are working and who are new in this field they have request to you know upload some of more videos regarding server 22 or 19 anything so that they can also you know be busy they can keep themselves busy so the main purpose of updating this video is just to help those students those le learners okay and my humble request is that guys please stay at home stay safe if you think that you're safe it's okay and you are not going to be infected this might be illusion okay now many of my friends are also infected by this of course they are cured now they are safe but many of them okay my close friends they were infected in past few months but thank to god they are okay but every one of us are not lucky like that like we are safe we are lucky but many were not many are not still so i, I hope that you guys understand that why i didn't upload my video so now uh, as a, some of the friends some of the students they have requested so that they can keep themselves busy out of this pandemic so that's why uh, today i have you know managed mentally myself to update this one or two or three video i don't know how many I'm, i'll be able to do this because we all are suffering from this pandemic okay so without wasting your much time as some of the students have already asked or requested for making more videos so i'd like to continue this one with a new topic for today that's an app locker okay so let's start with that uh, the meaning of app locker how it works okay how it should go what are the prerequisites so i'm going to you know, show you rest of the things regarding the same now so first of all thank you for supporting so let's start now what are the things we are going to discuss today okay so as i've already said today we are going to discuss about uh, your app locker see app locker is one of the most important feature that's been provided by the microsoft okay in order to lock some of the app that you do not want your client to execute or it might be due to the security reason or it might be that uh, your users they are using or they are trying to use some of the app that it, they were not supposed to be used in your organization now for today of course if i show you the process of locking any of the app via group policy i do believe you all export you'll be able to lock or you'll be able to you know block some of the applications that you do not want others to execute in your environment now for today the easiest one the shortcut okay the shortest video that i can make it for showing you one example is to lock one app of course we are going to take it as a browser itself okay so i'm going to show you okay how to you know lock or block any of the app in our environment so in my case i'm going to show you how to block internet explorer okay or it might be your google chrome any browser that you would like to block if you think that those uh, you know the browsers you do not want your staff to use due to some reason for a few days or it might be any incident this is a, just a one event only that i would like to show you okay but when we talk about you know blocking any app or locking any app via app locker there are certain things that you need to understand before you deploy that otherwise trust me guys it's not gonna work so if you think that you, you'd like to block your users okay for not using any of the browser for example okay 
Now, these are the prerequisites that you need to understand. Okay, a prerequisite in a sense, these steps must be followed. Otherwise, you will not be able to block the application that you are trying to block in your environment. Okay, block in your en environment. The first thing is that whenever we deploy any kind of group policy via group policy in your network environment, if we talk about application locker, okay, that will, we lock application, you need to understand that when you lock any of the application or when you block any of the executable app in your system don't forget if you block the executable any kind of app in your operating system your operating system executable files will also get disturbed when you restart the system that means you will have to make two policies number one allow all the executable app that are required to boot your system that are required to perform your day-to-day -day tasks including some of the other applications that are being executed number one number two on top of that you are going to create one app lock group policy that says that apart from the default application i would like to block these of the applications so that's why two policies are mandatory i've seen sometime that uh, some of the students they used to say that sir i created one app logger policy but after that some of my app it didn't execute at all because default policy has to be allowed in order to open some of the other application now step number two whenever we said that to lock any of the app using app lock policy over here you need to understand that it has to be set as a automatic inner services by default your app lock policy is block actually that we call application identity i would like to show you why one of the client operating system okay by default it is block that means it's said not to you so let's see if i go to the one service of my client operating system i would like to show you that application identity is manual actually it's not set to automatic Okay, so it has to be set automatic. Of course, we are not going to do this via client. There is an option in a group policy itself via server. But I'd like to show you that sometime if you forget to set application identity a service to be automatic in your domain main group policy through which you are going to deploy, in that case, it will not work. That means over here, application identity, see, this application identity, it has to be your automatic actually here. It has to be automatic. Don't forget this okay now since we are going to deploy via group policy so this policy is going to be override via our group policy and the next requirement that i was talking about this policy we are going to deploy in the computer this is not user configuration this is a computer configuration so what we are going to do we are going to create one group in that group we are going to drag it all the computers on which you would like to lock or block some of the app and on that group only we are going to deploy this policy so that rest of the you know group or rest of the computer do not get disturbed so let's go to the server 2022 now this is my server 2022 okay now let's go to the group policy over here okay now first i would like to take you to the active directory users and computers where the client is already joined okay now via that ou okay i would like to drag that particular device so that in that computer uh, some of the app that you like to block is not going to function so let's say over here there is a one computer domain join i would like to deploy this policy to this computer so this computer i'm going to drag it into one ou okay so that we deploy this policy into this ou and that computer will get effect by that policy okay user has nothing to do with this okay it is computer based configuration so that's why i have moved over here okay now first work is done okay now we'll be going to the group policy of course we'll have to create our own group policy in order to lock some of the app okay so there are some steps that i need to show you step by step okay so let's go to the group policy management of course i do believe that you still remember though it's been many days or it might be a month since i have not updated a video and the reason is already mentioned to you all so let's create our own group policy okay so that we can link it later on okay so i'd like to create one group policy over here and give a name let's say app lock okay for example you can have any name you can give any name you want okay so let's see now first we'd like to edit this policy and as i told you this app locker policy is not configured to the user it's configured to the device basis that means computer configuration so we'll be going to the policy i do believe we all know that then go to the window setting 
Please note down the steps, okay? Go to the Windows setting. Since I've opened so many app, it might be slow a bit. Now then go to security setting. Over there, you'll be getting an option, okay? Here, software restriction. Sorry, it's inside a application control policy. It's not that. So inside application control policy, you'll be finding app locker. Now, the first thing that you need to understand is that if I straight away, for example, if I straight away from here, see, there are three rules, basically, executable rule, installer rule, script rule. Let's start with this executable rule learning, okay? Now, if I right click and create a new rule, as I told you, you will not be able to execute some of the app because that is a default app that's been running currently in your system. This policy will be deployed to those computers also. So that's why first thing, okay, first thing, what you need to do, you'll have to create a default rule. See, I, I was talking about the rules that has to be allowed in a computer system so that it does not affect your system. So these are the default rule that will help you to run your current executable files. On top of this only, we are going to create a new rule. But before that, there is one more thing, guys. You will have to see this configure rule enforcement. Remember, application identity, that is enforced from here. See here, audit only or enforce rule. If I do this enforce rule to executable, since we are going to deploy this for the executable rule, then only the client's application identity will be override by this policy. That means if you forget to do this, your policy will not be deployed. Okay, now after having this default policy being accepted in the system, that means we created the default rule so that your currently running application will not get stopped in a client machine. Now then we'll be able to create a new rule. Okay, now of course it's a new rule. So let's go for the next. Now what do you want this to take action? Allow or deny? Obviously we're trying to lock some of the app for the instance. So whom do you want to block this? Everyone since we are in a lab environment, okay? Now we'd like to go for the publisher-wise, path-wise or file has. The best way for a lab environment is a path-wise, okay? Let's go to path. Now in the path also you'll be having two options. Number one, you browse that particular app having the executable file. That means exe might be internet explorer.exe, firefox.exe. Okay, these are the options like say see over here, Internet Explorer, iExplorer.exe is here. Okay, now you can select this also, but there is option to select a full folder also because apart from iExplorer.exe, there might be other file that helps to hit this event and execute this, your Internet Explorer. This is for instead, for example, like Susan, you can block any of the app. Okay, uh, but I do not suggest you to block this Internet Explorer actually, but this is for instance, I'm showing. Of course, in so sometime what happens that you might be used to with the using a Google Chrome, Opera, some Mini or other, and you thought that in Internet Explorer, it should be blocked because you'd like to follow the same protocol. That means it's a one set, okay, that everyone uses the same browser in your network environment. In that case, you can block this, okay. Now, the next one, as I was saying that, this is for selecting one particular executive file. What if there might be more executable files within that folder? So that folder is going to execute now. That file is going to run still. So in that case, you select the browse folder. Okay, now you can browse the folder. You go to the location and select the full folder itself. Here, Internet Explorer, I'm going to select the full folder. Whatever executable files are here inside this folder is not going to execute now. So go to the next. Now, if you'd like to go for any exception, apart from that, you know, the folder that you have selected. In that case, you can add it. But as I told you, we're in a lab environment. We don't want to do this. Okay, next. After that, it's saying the name. If you'd like to give any description, you can give for the description also. Create it and that's done. See, it is blocked to the everyone. Then what is block over here? Internet Explorer. Path, you see. Clear cut picture is over here. So that is done. Now the next important work over here is that we have created a one group policy, but it's not linked to that particular OU. So what we do now, go to that OU, right click, okay, and link an existing GPO. If you remember, we have written this app log, done. And then obviously we can wait for long to, so that this policy get updated itself. Okay, so let's update ourselves. 
GP update force. Okay. Because there is a de default timing for your group policy refresh interval, for which also I have made already video, I guess. So far, I remember for server 2019, over here also it's the same thing. Now, after the group policy has been, you know, added over here, updated over here, your client uh, for which you have added this group will not be able to execute this Internet Explorer. So that's it. It's simple. Okay. So if you think it was easy, it was fruitful to block any of the app over here in the network environment the internet explorer i have shown as an example only you can block any of the application actually sometimes it happens that in your organization the by default games are there they might be playing that all the time so you, you can block those type of app also so if you think it was a fruitful please do like and subscribe thank you